Hey, good morning, my friends. This is M Live Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrosse. So I'm going to give you a good solid update on the snowstorm slash blizzard that's heading our way. Uh, but you like my blurb there? Should we talk blizzard or should we talk major warm up? Well, you know me. We're going to talk both. In fact, I toyed with I toyed with this idea today this morning, but I thought, mm, no, we do have a serious winter storm heading our way. And it wasn't, I hadn't ironed it yet either. So you're probably going to see this. You might see it tomorrow, but you'll definitely see it early next week. All right, let's get into it. The changes overnight. I wrote a post about this. If you want to read about it. Um, and if you could share everybody, I would appreciate it very much. Uh, the changes overnight. The storm system is a little bit more what we call progressive. That is, instead of bombing out right over Lake Huron, stopping and spinning for six hours and then moving off, it's going to kind of just slide through and continue to move off. That means about six hours less of what we call system snow. And that means in the non-lake effect areas, you'll see the snow fall down about an inch or two. Now, the lake effect areas hasn't changed. As the storm pulls out, the lake effect will be there. So you might see the top end, the 24 inch amounts down to 22 or something like that. And another big change for me and my friends in the Saginaw Valley and the Thumb, all of the models are showing an enhanced burst uh, coming off of Lake Huron and the snowfall forecast is up a couple of inches for Saginaw, Bay City, the Thumb, even Flint, Lapeer, and that gets us on the borderline of probably needing a, a blizzard warning at some point. All right, so let's get started. I thought we'd start first off with this. This is the U.S. satellite. The interesting thing here, you see the kind of cluster of storms just to our west, but look at way out west on the far upper right of your screen. That is actually still the jet stream energy that will be merging into the storm tomorrow when it bombs out. Remember, bombing out means a storm drops 24 millibars uh, in its central pressure in 24 hours. And they actually found that that jet streak or that strong patch of the jet stream winds up in the northwest they found on an upper air balloon that at uh, in washington it was the third strongest wind they had ever recorded when the balloon went up about 220 mile an hour winds aloft up there so that's the engine to a storm system and as it comes down on the bottom of the trough that's what causes a bomb out it's kind of like a vacuum up aloft and it sucks the air from the surface. And think about this, 220 miles an hour, it doesn't stop to go potty or stop a cracker barrel when it's traveling. So that energy, a couple of thousand miles away, will be here in about 12 to 18 hours, and that's why the bombing process occurs at that time. All right, now into the details of our storm locally across Michigan. Hey, if you could please share, I would appreciate it very much. So pretty obvious, the blizzard warnings, northern lower Michigan down to, uh, say, Standish and down to Gladwin, uh, the west side of the state, the two tiers of counties, because of more snow. You'll we'll all have about the same wind, although one of the trends overnight is for stronger winds in the southeast part of the state and the weather service from White Lake which covers southeast lower Michigan, now saying look, very close to blizzard conditions. They just don't know if it will officially meet the criteria of three hours or more. So really not much has changed except for, I guess, I think the word is semantics, where, you know, just subtle details have changed. And again, I have a post on that. It's called Pre-Christmas -Pre Blizzard, What's Changed Overnight? You can read about that, but you're going to get it right here right now hey good morning cold water shirley o'connor and ann soul is from waterford checking in i gotta check out waterford i've heard a lot of nice things about it okay so what we're going to look at here is remember what we're what we're watching uh in the changes that i've been showing you from the last few days by the way i looked back at my first post on this storm system it was one week ago today. So we've been warning you, at least I've been warning you, I think the meteorological community has been warning you for one week now. 
The old adage of, boy, I wish I had your job because you're always wrong. Not anymore. Um, so what we're watching is more progressive storm. So it moves out a little bit quicker as far as the storm center goes. The winds don't change. They just hang tight, cyclonic flow, lake effect, wind-driven snow everywhere. Um, yes, Rob Guzdala, Frankie Muth, up probably two inches overnight. I would have said five or six yesterday, Frankie Muth. Now I would say seven or eight, maybe the chance to go to nine. Yeah, good morning, Kevin Novellino from Brooklyn Boys Pizza. I got to give a shout out to him. He does a great job. He taught me how to grill pizzas. All right, let's get to it. I'm sorry. Uh, I know you came for the weather. Okay, so European model. All right, still the timing. When does this start? Okay, still this evening. This is 7 o'clock this evening. The snow is starting in the western part of the state, and we're still watching for a rain. Now, the European is a little bit colder, but we're still watching for a rain in the southeast, which still means a flash freeze. Probably, I figure, 9 p.m. to midnight in Ann Arbor and the Detroit area, so be very careful there. Uh, Wendy Reed will get to Tawas here and all the snowfall totals in uh, just a moment. Uh, Robin Remnant, uh, most areas it will be a fluffy snow, but in the southeast it will be a wet snow at first. So this is this is eight o'clock, uh, seven o'clock tonight. Okay, I'm sorry, I had my times wrong. So this is early afternoon, four o'clock. Okay, this is eight o'clock tonight. Notice the rain in the Thumb and in the southeast, Ann Arbor and Detroit and Saline. I think I got that right. Maybe I can remember by Celine Dion. Um, and there you see, uh, this would be 10 o'clock tonight. That's where the flash freeze is coming across I-75. Okay. And the storm center doesn't look impressive because it's more progressive. And remember, because the energy that's causing the storm to bomb out will be just absorbing into it overnight tonight, and then it bombs out. So you see, uh, this is in the middle of the night tonight. We're getting snow, and now the storm is starting to take shape just off to our east. Instead of Lake Ontario, or Lake Huron, uh, as yesterday, it's now east of Lake Huron in Ontario. But then we get to Friday morning, and look at this. It's still snowy, it's still windy, it's still nasty. This is Friday, and the storm makes it up in Ontario, really deepens, and just then it puts a halt. So the difference is probably about uh, 200 miles on the halt of the storm, and that's significant. But then when you get the lake effect of Michigan, it's kind of uh, a neutralizer because we still get a whole bunch of lake effect snow. And this is the kind, um, and this is the kind of storm that just in general gives lake effect all the way into the eastern side of the state, uh, although to a, a lesser amount, okay? So here we are, and we go through tomorrow, and it's it's a stay off the roads type of day. I would not be surprised if, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to close some roads, and I think it would be warranted because I think in this situation, you know, Let's be honest. What is your biggest harm in this situation? What's your biggest threat? Yourself. Friday, Saturday, you shouldn't drive. The only way you're going to get out there and get in an accident is if you get in your car and drive. Now, emergency, yeah, you got to rush someone to the hospital. You got to do what you got to do. But, oh, I'd like to get some more buns for our Christmas celebration. No. Do without. All right. So, um, let's look at, uh, Saturday. <laughs> look at that. It's windy. It's snowy. Uh, and then let's look at Christmas day. Uh, let's say midday. It's cold. It's lake effect snow heavy in patches and it's still blowing at 30 miles an hour. So, all right. So now let's look at the U S model called the GFS and it is bombing the storm out again. It's a little bit further to the West and a little bit stronger, but this is tomorrow, and that's a nasty day. And, and the same timing, by the way, here is um, 7 o'clock this evening. 
So your rain in the southeast and in the thumb, and then uh, 10 o'clock, that flash freeze coming across I-75 and then moving into the thumb. And then the storm bombs out and rotates around and the wind continues. And this is Christmas Day, looks very similar. Um, and then we'll get into some much warmer temperatures. All right, so what we're going to do for snowfall totals here. Hey, thanks for joining me, 582 strong. If you could please hit the share button, I'd appreciate it very much. This is MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrosso with the MLive Morning Weather Update. I do this every morning, nine-ish. Um, running a little ahead this morning. I got up early. I feel good. I've got a good, solid update on the storm, so I know how to track the changes through the day. Um, yeah, William Milam, hopefully folks will listen. Uh, my advice on the, the traveling was, what's the biggest harm in this storm? You know about it. The biggest harm is if you get out on the roads Friday and Saturday when you shouldn't. And Christmas Day is kind of marginal. I know you're going to be tempted. The roads aren't going to be great. When you get down to near zero and the wind's still 30 miles an hour and you've had anywhere from 5 to 20 inches of snow, it's not like the roads turn just instantly great. So snowfall total. What we're going to use, we're going to use two things today. And uh, we're going to use the National Weather Service forecast. That's the first map I'm going to show you. Think it's very good. That's human meteorologists like me. Yes, you still need us. Um, looking at all the models and then making the human-made forecast, and it's very good. And then we're, I'm going to show you the what we call the national blend of models. So you hear me say the GFS and the Euro model and the NAM model and the high-resolution rapid refresh. Well, we've discovered that we can use artificial intelligence and blend those models and say, oh, the NAM is working better in this situation. Let's make it 60% of the snow forecast. The GFS, 20%. The European, 20%. And actually, artificial intelligence does that for us and it blends them, and that's a good thing too. And what you'll see on both of these is a little bit of a decrease by about one to two inches of snowfall forecast in the center part of the state, Mount Pleasant to Lansing to Jackson. I wrote about that this morning already. Um, and then an increase of a couple of inches, solid increase of a couple of inches, Saginaw Valley, Saginaw Bay City, the Thumb, Flint, Midland, maybe, you know, not about holding steady. And then the upper end is still there of 24 inches, but it comes in the form of lake effect and it comes through midday Christmas. So it's not a all at once. Okay. So here's the, na the new National Weather Service forecast. And it looks the same, except like I said, upped instead of five, six, seven inches in the thumb Saginaw area. It's solidly seven, eight, maybe nine, 10. Uh, Traverse City area, all of Northwest Lower still 12 to 20. We'll call it isolated 24s. Hey, thank you very much, Jenny Steele. Uh, Grand Rapids, maybe down a touch. You know, we were looking at maybe 14 yesterday. Maybe it's down to 11 or 12. And in the center of the state, uh, Lansing down a touch also. Now we're going to look at the national blend of models. Okay. And this can kind of sometimes do a little bit better on the mesoscale, small scale increases and decreases than say the humans can. We tend to smooth things out. And there you see it in the thumb. You see Saginaw Bay City up to seven. You see Carroll up to nine. Huron County, 11 and 12. So I would call the thumb in the Saginaw Valley area now a six to 10 inch, at least six, probably seven, probably eight, maybe getting nine, 10, 11, especially here on county. And that will probably put the Saginaw Valley and the thumb into a blizzard warning at some point. It's just that the National Weather Service in White Lake uh, covering that area is really conservative, a really uh, reserves a blizzard warning for the worst of storms. Uh, and in the short term, they don't go out into the future. Now, the National Blender Model says uh, Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, 12 inches, and it'll blow around a lot. Uh, Laura Nardelli, how much in Ann Arbor? I would say Ann Arbor is probably four or five inches. Ann Arbor, you're going to have some bare grass and 
foot to two foot drifts. Same for uh, Detroit. And you can also see the center part of the state, Mount Pleasant, Alma, Lansing, a little bit lower. But you also see the northwest lower and the UP. The UP is bomb <laughs> bombed with snow and wind, uh, but you're used to that. Okay, now we'll go into the winds. So I guess, you know, there's a couple parts of the story that I have to get out, and it's an easy one. On these big storms, it's usually an easy, um, easy points to get out. Uh, you know, it's a big storm, so stay off the roads Friday, Friday night, Saturday. Use your common sense Christmas Day. It probably likely will still be too dangerous for most of you to want to attempt to drive, and I would agree. Um, so the next thing is, when does it become bad? When do you have to be off the roads? Tonight, and by morning tomorrow, it will be fairly bad. When does it turn? Now, the next step is when does it turn to blizzard conditions? And we do that with the wind gust forecast. And let's go into that now so you know that when that is the case. Hey, we're 547 strong. Are you doing the share? I don't think so. Remember, your, your uh, like is okay, but share is a lot better. Your mommy always told you to share, right? Okay, so this evening, 7 o'clock. Can you tell where the gust front is? Never mention the coast of Lake Michigan cities. Well, the coast of Lake Michigan cities, uh, sorry, Julie Moyer, you're 12 to 20 inches. You're buried. The first two tiers of counties, 12 to 20 inches, uh, Benton Harbor, St. Joe, all the way up through Grand Haven, Holland, west of Grand Rapids, all the way up through Ludington, um, Manistee, all the way up to Frankfurt, and uh, Leland County. Uh, what if I'm traveling Saturday to Missouri? Do you think it will be okay, Jackie Wood? No, I don't. No, I don't. It'll be, it'll be bad. Okay, so uh, here is uh, 1 a.m. Friday, 1 a.m. tonight. Uh, And so there's your gust, your gust front is coming through. This is a really good way to see where the flash freeze will be. 1 a.m. It's coming to the thumb and it's through Detroit. And hey, good morning, honey. My wife is up now. Um, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. So really the worsening weather comes in Friday afternoon. Julianne, Ingham County, good uh, question. Lansing. It was as little as four, as much as six, and again, bare grass with one to two foot drifts. Um, and the wind speed is on the increase for the Lansing to Jackson to Detroit, Ann Arbor area, and into the Thumb. So this is 1 p.m. Friday. So it's, it's nasty. It's near blizzard conditions in the southeast and the winds are coming up this is friday evening if i had to pick a time where i would say all widespread nastiness it would be uh nearing sunset friday and you definitely want to be off the roads by dark this is saturday morning the winds come down just a touch and then during the day on saturday they come back up remember these are knots so you got to add Five miles an hour at least them so you're looking at 45 mile an hour gusts again midday saturday it's going to be bad um sarah carol friday afternoon bad okay let's go to christmas day let's go to christmas day morning remember add still add five so 30 mile an hour gusts temperatures in the single digits and uh, heavy lake effect snow, even drifting into the eastern side of the state. So it ain't going to be great. Pardon the French. Um, and then Monday morning, the winds come down and it's all over. Okay. So do you want to talk about the warm up? <laughs> no. I think you want to see this. First off, I would remind you that the beautiful thing about snow is it melts and this one will do so and in a rather quick fashion by this time next week 
Oh, I got some vacation days and I got to use them. So I'm taking some vacation. But by this time next week, if I were working, we'd be onto that. Okay. So here are the upper level temperatures. I show this to you often. The upper level temperature anomalies. Okay. So we're starting now, and here's our big cold blast that's coming. Okay. And then we get into Christmas Day. And then we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week, and it's still very cold. Uh, Nancy Frensky, what about Metro Airport flights incoming flights 7 p.m.? Uh snowball's chance and you know what <laughs> i guess i would say uh now wednesday look at what's going on now thursday and we're running about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than normal and friday and new year's eve day and it looks like by the way this has legs to last maybe the first week of january maybe into the second week all right so temperatures High temperature forecast. Get out the tropical shirts. High temperature forecast. Well, today we can make it to 40. In Saginaw, the Thumb, the Ann Arbor, Detroit area. Tomorrow, only in the teens. Low teens at that. Single digits. Jackson, you're colder than Lansing, which is colder than Traverse City and Saginaw. Uh, Saturday, high temperatures, only in the teens. Sunday. High temperatures, uh, Christmas Day, struggle to hit 20 degrees. Uh, Derek Castleton, don't push you, buddy. How about 50? We'll show you here in just a second. Um, Monday, upper 20s. Uh, I'm sorry, Monday, 20 in the teens, cold. Tuesday, a little bit better. Uh, Wendy Reed, is it temps or the wind that makes a blizzard warning? A blizzard warning is quarter mile visibility or less due to snow or blowing snow and lasting for three hours. So it's more a visibility thing due to snow and it has to last several hours or they won't give it a blizzard warning. Um, now here's Wednesday heading toward the freezing mark. Here's next Thursday heading into the upper 30s. Here's next Friday. Indications are we could make 40. We could make mid 40s. We have snow on the ground, so models don't temper it real well out that far. So it might be a little overdone. And here's New Year's Eve day, possibly 50 degrees. Saginaw to Lansing to Ann Arbor to Detroit. Uh, Grand Rapids in the 40s. Maybe even 40s all the way up to Traverse City and into the Mackinac Bridge. So, remember, snow melts. So the two biggest threats here in this storm system, since we know about it, is, are you getting on the roads when you shouldn't, unless it's an emergency, obviously. And the second biggest threat is there is a power outage threat. Um, it's not an ice accumulation type storm, but you know, anytime you get 55 or 60 mile an hour gusts, you can get some power lines down and it's not like the summer where you just kind of sweat without air conditioning. This is where your house gets really cold and dangerous and you got to worry about frozen pipes and all that stuff. I don't expect it to be like really widespread, like what an ice storm would do, but you know, in a neighborhood, where there's a dead tree, it could come down and take the power out in the neighborhood here and there and everywhere. And of course they're prepared for that, but it will be hard to repair that kind of stuff too in winds, blowing snow and wind chills below zero. If we see that, it'll be much like what we had with the damage to our house in the hurricane down in Florida. Everybody was helping the line men and line women, uh, you know, feeding them. In that case, it was keeping them cool, uh, letting them jump in the pool if it was okay. This case, let's keep an eye out for the line people if they have to work because it will be dangerous to be out there for that long with wind chills 20 below. All right.
Uh, Nate, uh, let's take just some uh, questions and thoughts. The storm doesn't look ominous on the radar right now. No, the storm is not put together. That's why it's going to bomb. So right now it's just a, a disheveled mess. Um, big piece of it's still out in Washington State. Um, and the other pieces are just kind of coming together. So it really doesn't gel until tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, let's see. Get the fireplaces ready. How will the roads be tonight until about 2 a.m.? Ryan Mosner, that flash freeze comes through the eastern side of the state. So I don't know where you're talking about, but it looks like that flash freeze comes through 10, 11, midnight across I-75, across the Detroit and Ann Arbor and uh, Saginaw Valley area. So you're going to want to be... Um, careful with that. Clint Westwood says DTE says they will not be fixing anything until Saturday. And I can see their reason. When's the flash freeze for Livingston County and Bickman? I would say, uh, let's go back. Let's go back and look. Okay. And now we're getting some good specific questions. If you want to rattle them off, I'll try to get it. Um, Pamela Todorov, Saturday night for services. Not a wise idea. I know you want to, but not a wise idea. Um, let's find the uh, flash freeze for you. I think we can use the GFS. Livingston County, you're probably looking at it around... That's 7 o'clock, and that is 10 o'clock. So I would say you're looking at Livingston County about 7 to 10. How confident are you in the storm track? Is there still a possibility of it moving? Tim Muir, yes. Um, see, what is what happens now is that prior to today, we were using upper-level observations from a world network and the ocean. The storm was in the ocean, so we were getting some pilot, uh, some airline reports, some air balloons. But now the storm gets into the U.S. domain and it gets sampled by everything we have. So if there are going to be changes, it probably will be last night's run, this morning and this afternoon's because the sampling will be better. It was a fuzzy picture before and a great fuzzy picture at that. Now the lens is uh, focused and the models can do better. So yes, uh, possibly. How's the local driving for Saturday afternoon? I don't know where you're talking about militia Emery, but you know, five to 20 inches of snow and still wind gusts to 45 miles an hour with temperatures at 10. You know what it'll be like. All right, Sunday travel from Kalamazoo to Traverse City. Will things be settling down by then, Carol? You know, in my mind, no. In my mind, Sunday may, Christmas Day may actually be the most dangerous day because people will attempt it. You're going to have to do your own common sense. But in my mind, I look at this, that track, Kalamazoo to Traverse City, 8 to 20 inches of snow in the 48 hours before it. Um, temperatures in the single digits. You know what US 131 is like with a six inch snow and a 20 mile an hour wind. Uh, let's see, daylight blizzard driving, your automatic daytime running lights do not turn on. Good point. And that's another reason to just be prepared and stay home. Uh, Carmen Lee to Tiffany, how prepared you for you for a power outage? Will you be able to transmit your forecast and updates? Yee. Um, we are in Frankenmuth right now, and Frankenmuth's power lines are mostly underground, and we've lost power once. Could it happen? Yes. It not very likely where we live at the moment. Um, I could still broadcast, and I don't have a generator here at our place in Frankenmuth because I need it more at our cabin up north where we tend to lose power more. Um, but I'll figure something out, definitely. All right, Michael Predmore, first responder here. Please stay home unless it's an emergency. We will have our hands full to begin with. Yes, first responders, this is this is kind of, you know, a smaller version of the hurricane 
uh, Ian thing. You know, they said, they said, you got to evacuate. If you don't evacuate, we don't know when we can get to you. Now, this isn't that kind of situation, but if you get out there on the road and get stuck, uh, you might call road service and they'll say, yeah, it'll be Monday. Uh, Bill Bashan, when we be getting a lot of rain with the warm up next weekend, we will get some rain. I haven't looked into how much. I don't think it's a lot. It's probably a quarter to half inch type rain system. Uh, Joseph Thomas driving from Grand Rapids to Traverse City tonight at 10. Safe or not? Mm, totally safe, no. Totally dangerous, no. Um, I'd leave a couple of hours earlier if you could, and that increases your safety. Uh, use your common sense. If, it, if at 10 p.m. you're about ready to leave Grand Rapids and you don't think it's safe, it will get less safe at 11 and less safe at midnight and less safe at 1 as you head northward. What will be wind be like for western Allegan County, Wayne? Um, you're looking at uh, by Friday afternoon, probably 45 to 55 mile an hour gusts. Will Amazon do, will still deliver stuff I need on Friday? My wife and I talked about that. We wanted to get something and we said, no, I don't trust that. Flights canceled and, you know, driving. So I would anticipate no. Uh, let's see. Do the hot water trip and throw it in the air to see what happens if it turns to snow. Okay, yeah, what he's talking about is, you know, when it's really cold, if you take a mug of hot water and you throw it up in the air, it freezes instantly. I live in northern Oregon County. I don't know where that is, Kendall Bailey. I've never heard of Oregon County. Hey, good morning, New Lothrop. Thanks for joining me on the MLive Morning Weather Update. For those of you, if you're just joining us, I'll just give you a quick back track. Uh, one, the two most common wanted maps, and that is here's the National Weather Service's new updated snow forecast. Uh, let's call it three to five in the southeast. Let's call it uh, six to 10 now, Flint to the thumb to Saginaw Bay City. Let's call it uh, five to seven center part of the state, Jackson, Lansing, up to Mount Pleasant. And then still, uh, let's call it 10 to 15, western third, northern third of the state of lower Michigan. Um, oh, okay, northern Oakland County, Kendall Bailey. That makes sense. Yeah, you're going to be... You're going to be 55. You might get the 60 mile an hour gust, and that would be Friday afternoon, early Friday evening. All right. Thanks for joining me on the MLive Morning Weather Update. My next post now on MLive uh, will be the timeline of the snowfall accumulation. So I'm going to say, hey, by 7 o'clock tonight, the state will have this much, and then by 7 tomorrow morning, and then by noon on Friday, uh, 7 p.m. on Friday. That will give you a good sense for when it really is too nasty for you to get out. Thanks for joining me on the MLive morning weather update. Don Brito, I haven't touched Harbor Beach. You're going to be into probably the blizzard conditions because the snow is beefed up there. Harbor Beach, you're probably at 10 inches and you're probably gusting to 50, 55 miles an hour. Aaron Robinson, I haven't verified this, but this is what Aaron says is that all Saturday flights canceled coming into Detroit, also driving from Flint to Detroit Saturday morning. That won't be a good drive at all, Aaron Robinson. Uh, so there you go. Thanks for joining me on the MLive Morning Weather Updates. Keep it, uh, keep your uh, bookmark handy on MLive. You know, on TV we used to say, stay tuned. We'll have more later on. I don't know what you say online now, but keep uh, updated with us here on MLive.com, and I'll be tracking any changes. There's still possible changes, little tweaks. I don't expect anything big, but little tweaks possible. I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa.